I want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us here at Metro Christian Church uh, as we're talking about all of these wonderful things that God is doing here. This morning, today, this Sunday, thousands of people across the nation are gathering at houses of worship to cheer, to celebrate, to pray. And these places don't look like this. They're called Mile High, AT&T, Lambeau Field, and all kinds of different NFL stadiums. As many teams kick off their NFL season this morning, please don't check your fantasy score during service. I don't want to hear about it. But you know, over at SoFi Stadium, they're still reeling and reading from the book of Ramentations because the poor Rams lost their opener. But the few, the proud, the chosen, the Bronco fans are excited for Monday Night Football. Bronco fans in the house, it's gonna be awesome. You know what's funny is, it's in the human heart to want to gather and cheer for something. Hear me out. Even if you're not convinced about the whole God thing, even if you're on the fence about if Jesus is real or not, there's something in the human spirit to want to like get excited and cheer for something. You see, whether it's good food and you can't help but post it on your social or tell someone what this new restaurant you found, whether it's gathering for concerts or sporting events, there's something about the collective gathering that's in a part of us to want to get excited about something greater than us, something that we're a part of what is happening. I mean, if you're not a sports fan, these arenas and stadiums fill up. If you're not a sports fan, maybe you like music or movie premieres or different artists. I mean, I'm looking at you, BTS Army. I see all this action like this. If you know what this is, ask someone who likes BTS. They'll tell you all about it. You know how I know BTS is Korean, not Chinese? Because if it was a Chinese pop band, they'd do this. <laughs> Just saying. But if we're honest, if we're really honest, Sunday mornings at church, this kind of gathering, it kind of pales in comparison to being at Stan Sheriff in game five on the game winning serve and everybody's doing this all together and it's super loud and there's let's go bows. We kind of sit here on Sunday mornings like this. Let's go home. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Sometimes if we're really honest here, I grew up in church. I can talk from both ends of it, from being a kid, forced to get up in the morning to come to church on Sunday mornings to now working for a church. How did I get it here? Oh yeah, thanks a lot, right? So all of these things, I can see what Sunday mornings can be like, and honestly, how they can be really engaging, and how sometimes they can be really boring. I mean, can we just call a spade a spade? Sometimes, Sunday morning, this kind of gathering, it doesn't, it doesn't hold a candle to, to big giant concerts at T-Mobile Arena, or, or giant gatherings at stadiums, and all these things. So let me ask this question. Why do we do this? Why do Sunday mornings, like church, why does this exist? Do we just do this because we've always done this? Like this is what's expected of someone who's a Christian. And now with pandemic, we watch online. Maybe you're joining us online for a 9 a.m. live stream. You see, the whole point of this is very important. Here's why. We're in the middle of a series that we're calling Faith Five. And we're spelling out the word faith. F-A-I-T-H. Each of these letters has some meaning behind them because it tells us where we're going as a church. F stands for fresh evangelism. Pastor Mike talked about one of the big priorities for us as a church is sharing our faith in a new and fresh way. A is affect the community. Last week, Pastor Elwin shared the whole idea. We want to be a church that does more outside of the walls of the church in the community than does inside the walls of the church. We want to get out there so one day, if this church ever left this area, that Kalihi community would say, oh, we miss Metro. They did so much to help the community. We want to affect the community. I got great news. Here's a praise report. We talked about the Palama Settlement Cow Cow Corner where we're feeding kids after school, after practice. We launched that this past week with the help of awesome volunteers. We fed, it's, it's a, not an extension to say, we fed hundreds of kids over Wednesday and Thursday. Can we praise God for that? Isn't that awesome? You did that as a church. We're talking about vision, where we're going. We're doing these things. We're also talking about the Lo'i Kalo cleanup. We're going to do that in October, monthly. There's things that are happening. F-A-I. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the middle one. If I can take a step back, Faith 5 is in the context of formation and mission. Remember that bicycle I had on stage with the two big wheels? If you missed it, I put a bike on stage and said, let's roll, church. Here's where we're going. The front wheel is spiritual formation, being changed by Jesus so that we can live like Jesus. That's mission. Formation and mission. Here's where we're going. So someone came up to me after church and said, Hey, pastor, I get it. Changed by Jesus to live like Jesus. Formation and mission. How do we do that? 
What does that look like? Faith five, putting this into practice. The first two letters, fresh evangelism, affect the community, are mission. Now we're going to move into spiritual formation. And impactful services is all about spiritual formation. How are you changed by Jesus? How does Christ change your heart to look more like him? One big, part, one big way we do that is by gathering on Sunday together. That Sunday mornings would be an impactful time where you would be able to, here it is, here's the big idea, you'd be able to be impacted by the Spirit of God through the Word of God with the people of God. That you would be impacted by the Spirit of God, by the Word of God, with the people of God. Friends, say this with me. It's worth saying out loud. Ready, go. Impacted by the Spirit of God, through the Word of God, with the people of God. One more time. Impacted by the Spirit of God, through the Word of God, with the people of God. I was going to totally go youth ministry on you and have had motions. By the Spirit of God, through the Word of God, with the people of God. But you're welcome. I'm not going to do that today. But you get it, right? The whole idea is, why do we do Sunday? Is so that you would be impacted by the Spirit of God by the Holy Spirit of God through different communal aspects of worship together on Sunday along with God's people. So let's break this down. What does it mean to be impacted by the Spirit of God? First of all, acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is everywhere. He's God with us. No matter where you are, Holy Spirit is with you. But there are certain times, if we're honest, when we're made more aware of His presence. Yes, Holy Spirit is with us all the time. But there are certain times in our lives when it feels like he's with us more. That's theologically a little weird. Oh, have you ever said this? Wow, I just, God really showed up. It's like, bro, God was already there. He was waiting for you to show up. You know what I mean? It's almost like, you know how there's radio signals and TV signals flying around us right now? You know how there's like Wi-Fi signals all in this building at your house? There's Wi-Fi everywhere. But until you actually log on with your device or you tune in with your station or whatever it is, then you're made more aware of the signals around us. We hope that Sunday mornings would be a time when your heart tunes in a little more to what the, God, to the Spirit of God is saying to you, that you'd be impacted by God's Spirit. We pray that Sunday morning wouldn't just be, okay, I'm here. Because when I was growing up as a kid, my mom, as a single mom, did her best to get me out of bed, even as a high schooler, to put on a collared shirt, put on a smile, and show up because I had to be at church. And honestly, I didn't want to be there. But she did so to lay a foundation for me. And now as an adult, I see that when God's spirit impacts you, when you give him time, it changes the way that we view our lives. We believe that Sunday mornings give us time as corporate, communal, foundational expressions of worship to draw our hearts closer to God, to hear his will, to respond to his grace. And it's actually in times of musical worship that this happens. Would you open your Bibles with me? We're going to be in Colossians 3 and also Psalm 95. Go ahead and find Colossians 3 that talks about how musical worship is an important part of how we're going to do certain things here. Now, can you worship God without music? Absolutely. Worship God with the way that you live. Romans 12 tells us that. But musical worship has a place. And throughout history, songs and music were big parts of this. Here's Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead and skim down to verse 16. After talking about how love binds us together in unity, how the peace of Christ rules in our hearts, verse 16, Colossians 3, 16 says this. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Isn't that interesting? That here, this specific scripture talks about psalms, hymns, singing, and singing again. And it's not the only one. The Bible constantly references singing to God. Because singing is a way that our hearts emote, get emotion out. We get ourselves in line with what God's spirit is doing. So we're impacted by the spirit of God. It's almost like musical worship is a chance for our hearts to tune in, to actually log on to what's being going around us. Holy Spirit is with us. So using that kind of time in worship to be able to do so. Okay, now flip over to Psalm 95. Psalm 95. If you're not familiar 
The book of Psalms was a huge hymnal, a song book that the Israelites in the Old Testament would sing. These are the songs that the Jews would sing in the Old Testament. They had all kinds of psalms. 150 of them uh, recorded in the Bible. These are the songs that Jesus would sing. They'd sing it on the way to temple or to synagogue. They'd sing it walking up to Jerusalem. That's why you'll see psalms. Some of them are songs of ascent. They're walking up the hill to go back to, to the temple. But in Psalm 95, it captures the heart of this, why we sing. Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Okay, can I be really honest with you? A lot of times, uh, the book of Psalms will say, uh, come sing to the Lord or lift up a shout of praise or something like that. And that's what the Bible says. And some of us come to church like this. Okay, let's sing a song. Wow, that note was really off. I don't know if I'm going to worship today. <laughs> Guys, I got to tell you, when we come in on Sunday mornings, I want you, I want us in impactful services to come sing for joy to the Lord. Let's do that together. Because I got to say, when it says shout aloud to the rock of our salvation, come before with thanksgiving, there is nothing worse than our worship team who has practiced for literally hours. Thursday night, couple hours. They heard Sunday morning from 5.30 till 12.30. And they're all volunteers. We don't have any professional musicians on our team. 100% volunteer driven, and I love it. You know why? Because the guys and gals up here, they're regular people like you and me. And they're using their gifting to lead us into worship. And they're leading us into worship so we can bring our song of joy to the Lord. Because when we're singing these different songs, when we're saying, you turn morning to dancing, bum, 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 bum. And we're on stage and we're going for it. And some, I'm not going to point at any people, I'm not going to point at any people around here, but some people walk in and during worship, they're like this. Okay, okay, oh, okay. Or some people during worship, I'm not going to point, I'm not going to name any names, but some people in here sit like this. Oh, is that a text? Oh, okay, sorry. I got something to do. Oh, I got something to do. I got something. Guys, why do we sing in musical worship? The Bible tells us to do so because it moves our hearts into places where we remember how good God is. Check this out. Back in Psalm 95, verse 3. For, great is the, for the Lord is the great God. The great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are, his, we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Guys, why do we sing on Sunday mornings? Why am I asking you to stand and sing? I'm not asking you to do this like some crazy person like me. Like you just worship God full out. You can get there eventually, but at least sing the words. We give you the words. The least you could do is sing. Let's sing. Oh, but pastor, I don't sing very well. Nobody cares. Sing. Well, if you sing really bad, we'll let you know. But sing. Just give them. You know why? Because it's not about people around you. It's about you and God. It's about you worshiping Jesus. Open your heart to the Lord. Guys, take church out of the picture. I know there's been a time in your life when a song came on, the radio or Spotify, and your heart went, yeah. Like that song resonated in your spirit. You're like, oh, yeah, oh, mm. Yeah, that's the song. Whatever song that was for you, because music moves the spirit. I know that's true for everyone. And even if you, oh, they're playing this worship song again. Ugh, they got to get something new. Then come along and join the ride. We'd love your help. Because the whole point is we sing to get our hearts in line with God. Check this out. Worship gives us perspective. Worship gives our heart perspective. Impactful services, you'll be impacted when you remember you're not God. So therefore, stop freaking out. You're not in control. He is. He made the mountains. He made the ocean. And he made you. 
And you are the sheep of his pasture. You're his people. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, etc., etc. An entire psalm familiar to many of us reminding us that God is in control. God knows us, loves us, cares about us, and walks with us through the hardest times. I think it's a travesty that in the last couple of years with all the misinformation and election and COVID, the word sheep has been used as an insult. You're all sheep. And it's like, well, if the Lord is my shepherd, then bah, sister. Let me be a sheep unto the Lord. Not the misinformation of all this whatever. You're just following blindly. No, I'm going to follow Jesus. Call me a sheep because that means God is my shepherd. Psalm 95, like the hundreds of psalms around it, recalibrate our hearts to remember, I'm not in control. Oh, thank God, I don't have to freak out then. Oh, I'm not totally the one that can move everything and make it happen. You move the mountains? Okay, okay. Oh, you're the way maker? You're the light in the darkness? Even when I don't see it, you're working? Okay. There are times in my life when my life was really, really junk. Like, I wish I could change everything, but I couldn't. When it was so bad, and I would come into church broken, dealing with shame and guilt and all that junk. And it was in times of worship where the Holy Spirit would start to move my heart. I'm not going to kid you and say everything was bad, and after one Sunday, everything was good. No, no, it was more like this. Everything was bad, and slowly through intentional time of pressing into God's spirit, keeping my heart open, and especially how move it, music moves the spirit, allowing God's spirit to change my heart. Sunday mornings, impactful services are important. Not just because, whoa, we just gotta do church on Sunday. No, 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 because your heart and mine needs perspective. It needs to be brought back to the table of trust to say, God, I'm going to trust you because even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, because we're a society defined by feelings, aren't we? We do things because of how we feel in that moment for better and especially for worse. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. It's establishing that I'm going to trust in the Lord no matter what's going on. Worship gives us perspective. So can I encourage you to consider that worship Impactful services, being moved by, impacted by the Spirit of God is a chance, especially in musical worship, to be able to let our spirit move. In those times when my life was really bad, I felt like my heart was like a stone, meaning no one could talk to me about what I was going through because I wasn't hearing it. I was deaf to them. When I'd worship, sometimes I'd be like, God, I want to trust you, but I just feel like I can't. And it would feel like rain bouncing off concrete. Bing, bing. And if anybody knows what I'm talking about, you know how tough that is. Maybe you're there right now. I want to tell you this, the vision, the heart, the intention, the direction for when you come on Sunday is that you would have an opportunity to let the Holy Spirit open your heart ever so slowly. Like the budding of a rose, would your heart be open a little more to receive the living water that comes from the Spirit of God? That's our intention. That's our heart. That's our prayer for what happens here on a Sunday. Because God knows we don't need Christian songs, karaoke, and a pep talk to go home for lunch. We need to interact with the spirit of the living God. And worship is one way to do that. Worship is also a weapon of victory. Can I, can I just remind us as a church, worship is a weapon of victory. Scripturally speaking, the walls of Jericho fell at the ram's trumpet and the shouts of the Israelites. Music was used for that victory. If you fast forward through stories of Jehoshaphat, if you fast forward to stories of Elisha asking for a harpist for wisdom into the situation, if you fast forward to Paul and Silas locked up in prison singing songs of hymns of praise, even in their worst moment, the earthquake comes and the walls come down in the prison, they're freed. Why? Because worship is almost a setup for God's victories. We want to make that for Sunday morning. We want it to be so. Here's the next one. Impacted by the Spirit of God, impacted by the Word of God. Impacted by the Word of God. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. 1 Timothy 4. You know, why does the Bible talk about reading the Bible publicly, communally? Not just in 1 Timothy 4, but in other parts of Scripture. Because when you talk about it together with people, it makes a bigger difference. 
In the Old Testament, when the Israelites are freed from slavery, Moses camps with them in front of Sinai and reads to them the laws God has given them. He reminds them where they've been, their life of slavery before, what's happening now, who they are because of God's goodness, and now where they're going. I pray that on Sunday morning, we would be reminded together as a people, as God's people, of where we've been, who God says we are now, and then how we can be changed by Jesus to now live like Jesus together. The public reading of Scripture, not only in the Old Testament, but the New Testament, was an impactful way that God spoke to people's hearts. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, going to the back of the New Testament. If you're new to the Bible, that's like almost all the way to the back. So just keep flipping all the way over there, over there. I want us to see how God's word impacts us. Hebrews, 12, uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Verse 13. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Make no mistake, my friends, we will all give account to our creator. We will all give account to the things that we've done, that we've said, even things that we thought that we've hid, especially things we thought that we've hid. It is a constant theme woven through scripture that God knows all and he sees all. And with all due respect to the fat man in the red suit with the white beard, there's somebody else that I know that sees you when you're sleeping and knows when you're awake. God sees through all the stuff. And even Jesus said, there's nothing hidden that won't be made known. What does the Bible say about the word of God? It's kind of like this. Have you ever used a pair of night vision goggles before? The ones that are long and you put them on like this and sees through all the dark and everything like that. Has anybody ever used those before? Does anybody own a pair of those? Because I've never used them. I'd like to try them. We can try to live in the dark. We can try to hide different things, different thoughts, different attitudes, and we're really good at it. This is probably not you, but maybe you know someone like this that you work with or you're related to, where they're really nice to someone's face. Oh, oh hi, good to see you. I can't stand her. She's the worst. Anybody else? You can really hide the way that you feel about something, but God sees through all the darkness. God cuts through all of those things. And what do you think God does when he sees what's really going on here? How do you think God feels when he sees your cleared search history, but he knows what you're looking at? How do you think God feels when he knows the intentions of your heart, even though you put it on the side and you pretended a certain thing? How do you think God feels when he actually sees through? Does he go like this? Is, is he disapproving gecko? Like, what, what, how does God feel about this? His heart breaks and he reaches out in love because Jesus came to die for that sin. The mercy of Christ is poured out overwhelmingly from heaven. And the word of God is living and active. It's sharp. It divides. It can tell the difference between fake and real and true and fallacy. And it calls us home. Romans 2 says it's the kindness of the Lord that leads us to repentance. And when we gather on Sunday for an impactful time, if the sermons are boring, I'll take full responsibility for my dad's sermons, but not mine, so I'm just saying. <laughs> and Mike's, so I'm lumping you in on that Mike, so. <laughs> Pastor Mike's the new guy, but still. Hey, we, I hope that when we share God's word, it impacts you right where you are. Now, Please don't hold me accountable because not every Sunday can be a home run, right? Not every Sunday can be a number one chart topper. But it is to say that when our hearts are open to what the Spirit of God is saying, He's going to lead us closer to Him. He's going to show us what, His, what life in the kingdom of God is like and how many times we, we fall very short of that standard. And it's not to say try harder so you get A plus and you become doctor. No, 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 no. It's to say don't forget the grace of God that meets you more than halfway. Don't forget the grace of God that fills in all of our potholes and divots and character flaws. Don't forget the grace of God that saved you in the first place and helps you to be changed by Jesus so you can live like Jesus. That's the whole heart of this church. Impactful services, impacted by the Spirit of God, through the Word of God. God knows how many times He has spoken to my heart 
because on Sunday mornings, in my private time, in my Bible study, of something the pastor preached in a time of worship, my heart was changed. There was a time in my life when I felt so hopeless, and I felt like I couldn't see a way forward. And we sang songs about worshiping God, and I just was not having it. And I was praying and asking God, God, why am I not feeling this? And it was actually a friend that came up later and said, I don't know why I'm supposed to say this to you, but I feel like God is supposed to say, she shared a word of hope with me. And God sees you as a man of hope. Some of you heard this story before. And then we sang right after that, in pure heavenly coincidence, we sang, my hope is built on nothing less. And then I went, oh, God, you see me. And I started just worshiping. God sees you right where you are. The question is, is your heart open to be impacted by the Spirit of God through the Word of God with the people of God? As this is a vision series of where we're going as a church, can I ask you this, please? If you're checking out our church and just seeing if you want to be here or not, awesome. Thank you for just coming and checking us out. We appreciate you giving us a shot. Because you could be coming for like, like one time, five times, eight times, still kind of be on the fence. Hey, we get it. You, you got to decide before you commit. But if this is your home church, if you're with us, if you're like, oh, Metro, that's my church. If you're with us, I want to ask you this. Bring your Bible on Sunday. I really want to ask you to bring your Bible on Sunday. Why? Because as we get into this together and you find the scripture yourself, and I ask you to highlight or underline whatever it is, when you go back and look at it later for yourself through the week at different points, You'll say, where was that scripture again? The word of God is living in, oh yeah, yeah, wait, I remember looking at that in church. Bring it together so we can read it together. Because we give you the scripture on the wall that's kind of for like beginners. That's like the kindergartner baby help steps, yeah? But if you've been like a Christian long time, if you've been like, I was a Christian back in black and white TV and like dial up internet and like all like, then, then brought a sister, bring your Bible on Sunday. Because when you bring your Bible, you get into the word with us. Well, excuse me, Pastor, is my phone Bible okay? Yeah, it is, if that's what you use all the time. That's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. But bring something, because I want you to read it. We read, there's many translations of the Bible. If you want to know what they are and why they're different, go ask Cameron. Like, Pastor Cam knows all that stuff. But we read the New International Version, the NIV, primarily because it was on sale and we're cheap. But... <laughs> Nah, because we feel like it's a good middle-of-the-road translation. Like, it's not too academic, and it's not too paraphrased. We feel like it's a very every-person kind of translation. So we go with the NIV. You read what you want. When you come on Sunday, we read at the NIV. Bring your Bible on Sunday. Turn to your neighbor. Tell them, bring your Bible. Bring your Bible. And if you got it, be like, I brought my Bible, whatever. Okay, go ahead. Just tell them. Just, just face. Face. Talk to the hand. So 90s. <laughs> okay. Um, bring your Bibles. And impacted by the Spirit of God. The word of God, and here's the last one, with the people of God, with the people of God, with the people of God. Why is this important? Because in our hyper-individualized uh, convenience of society in a way where it's all about me and what I can get now, we forget that we're a part of the collective. And when you forget that you're a part of a bigger, larger body, a family, a group, a, a tribe, a people, we forget we're part of a people, then we forget that God is speaking to us as a people also. It becomes so individualized that we forget that God is calling us forward, not just me forward. Hebrews chapter 10, we're in Hebrews earlier. Here's Hebrews 10, verse 24 and 25. Hebrews 10, this part of scripture was written to people who are going through hard times. And if you're going through a hard time, this is a good place to read. Hebrews 10. After talking about, uh, we're in verse 24. If you want an extra credit, read verse 23. After 23, talking about holding unswervingly to this hope we profess, because he who promises faithful to us. Verse 24 says, and do it with people, not just by yourself. Verse 24, Hebrews 10, 24. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another as all the more you see the day approaching. The word day is capitalized. It means judgment day, the end. When, when you see the end coming, as we know, we're in the last days. Make sure you're still meeting with people. I've heard from many of you who are in wonderful connect groups that it's the, one of your favorite parts of the week because you get to encourage one another, be with each other. That, that's what this is about. But don't make a mistake that it's only just your connect group. It's the bigger part your connect group's a part of. It's, it's the family here on Sunday. It's about... Meeting together because people like to give up on it and we're not made to do this solo. For example, 
There are things that we can do solo as people, but it's better together. For example, something as simple as eating food. Should you eat food by yourself at home? Yeah, totally. But every once in a while, when you gather with friends, it's a lot better to eat together. You follow me? You could shoot hoops by yourself and practice and all this stuff, but you'll never win a championship shooting by yourself. You need the together. Here's the final idea. Last night, uh, we took our kids to that UH volleyball game where they played USC. Uh, hand to God, we got free tickets. I was like, awesome, we got free tickets. So we walked up, I was like, I didn't know there was a row 17 on the upper. It's like the last row at the highest level of Stan Sheriff. I've never sat so high. I started walking up the stairs, my nose started bleeding. Just kidding, I didn't. I was sitting under the ad banners, you know, we're like, Kara, my wife, used to work at Stan Sheriff, so she knows everybody. We're like, well, we're high up here. But to Alana, my five-year-old daughter, and Hokua, my three-year-old son, it was the first game they'd been to. And the wonder on their eyes was, wow, wow. And as I pulled out my uh, cartographer's telescope to see the volleyball all the way down there, I said, I think we're winning. But when the whole stadium or the whole arena started chanting, let's go both, do, 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 let's go both, you could see my five-year-old son, let's go, I was like, yeah, and my son, it's too loud, like, never mind, never mind, never mind, you watch Paw Patrol louder than this dude, come on, and the whole arena is going, let's go both, Let, and you know what, you, you don't get that standing in front of your TV at home, do you? You stand in front of your TV and go, Let's go Bose. Oh, microwave, let's go. <laughs> and you know what? If you're watching online with us, you get that concept, right? Because convenience has made it where you and I can watch things online. I do too, just like you. And I'm glad that you're part of the Metro Online Ohana, you're part of the family, and that's awesome. But can I encourage you? I know that some of us have health issues or we're caring for a loved one and we have to be home. I get it, and that's fine. But if you're someone who this is just more convenience, and coming on Sunday and getting up and going somewhere is harder, hey, come join us at least once a month, maybe twice a month, because being in person, in the house, present here, makes a world of a difference. Because you won't get a lot of the stuff we're talking about just by watching online. Because if we're chanting, let's go Bo Bose, Je Jesus, let's go Jesus, if we're doing something like that, you're not gonna get it just watching me on a screen or hearing us on a podcast. Although it's a nice convenient way to receive what's being said, you won't get the full experience. And everyone in the house said amen. amen. You heard that? We'd love to have you. Come, there's a seat for you right here. We'd love to have you. You see, we know that doing it together makes a difference. Listen to Don Whitney, the writer of Spiritual Disciplines. There's an element of worship in Christianity that cannot be experienced in private worship or by watching worship. There's some graces and blessings that God gives only in the meeting together with other believers. To give you a way more ancient and reformational type of quote, Martin Luther said, at home, in my own house, there's no warmth or vigor in me. But in the church, when the multitude is gathered together, a fire is kindled in my heart and breaks its way through. Yes, you should absolutely read your Bible on your own, but we're not talking about spiritual disciplines today, we're talking about them later. Today is the importance of Sunday morning. This is why this matters. This is why on Sunday morning, our job is to help to provide an impactful service opportunity for all of us here today. And the best part about it is, is we don't do it alone. We need one another to be a part of this. Because to summarize, impacted by the Spirit of God, through the Word of God, with the people of God, it's three easy words. Adoration, restoration, and celebration. Adoration is adoring God, glorifying God, adoration of God. And like Psalm 95, great is the Lord. As we adore God and he puts us in our place, adoration moves our hearts to a place of saying, God, thank you for letting me trust you. Restoration. Restoration is restoring our lives back to how it was supposed to be. Acknowledging our sin, receiving redemption from Christ, and now restoring our hearts, our families, our relationships, our perspective, restoring our broken world to be changed by Jesus. We can live like Jesus and restore brokenness in other people's lives. Start with yourself. Restoration happens on Sunday morning. And finally, celebration. We want to celebrate what God is doing in your life. We want, to celebrate. We want Sunday morning to be a celebration. 
Well, we saw the balloons outside, but that's just more for what I'm going to talk to you about next. But we want to celebrate what God is doing. So everybody do this with me. Everybody pull out your phone. If you got a phone, pull out your phone. If you got a phone, pull out your phone. If you got a phone, pull out your phone. Some of you are just looking at me. But I got a phone, pull out your phone. This is something we're doing brand new today. This is a brand new thing we're doing. We're going to do this on Sundays, on weekends, in different ways. Scan that QR. It takes you to a praise report form. Now, if God is doing anything worthy of praise in your life, we want to hear about it. As you'll notice on this um, uh, sheet that it's taking you to, it's taking you to our website uh, with the prayer and testimony form. If this is not working and you're having a hard time with this, raise your hand and our resident millennials will come and help you out. We have computer science nerds. We have engineering kids. We have, um, we have six-year-olds. They're very proficient on phones. This takes you to our page. We want to hear what God is doing in your life. Now, you can choose to keep this confidential. You can say, please don't share this, and that's fine. We won't share it. But if there's anything going on that's worthy of praise, we want to hear about it. You know why? Because when you hear about what God is doing in someone's life, doesn't it boost your faith a little bit? When you hear about someone's, uh, someone's health being restored or marriage being restored or someone getting a job they've been praying for, doesn't it make you go, wow, God is good. Yeah? We want to do that. Now, we won't do it like this every Sunday. Uh, we're going to do today in real time, meaning whatever you write, uh, we have someone in the back filtering through them so that I don't get the joke ones like, like Art saying, oh, my bibbidis never fit and now they fit, praise God. Like, come on, Art, come on, Art. Yeah, Art going, oh, yeah. <laughs> but like real ones, like if there's something in your life that's worthy of praise, we want to hear about it. We want to celebrate this stuff. And periodically on Sundays, we're going to come out and say, hey, we got some praise reports this week that we want to praise God about. We won't share your name. Right? But rather, we're going to say, hey, we have a brother in our church or a sister in our church. Can we just thank God for that? Does that make sense? So write it out. Let us know. If you want it confidential, I won't hear about it. But if you don't and you're open to us talking about it, we'd love to hear about it because we know there's some good stuff that's going on. For example, here's some of the ones that we got so far. Thank you for sending these in. There's a sister in our church who said, God's been revealing her deep need for him. And that she can't rely only on her own strength or carry her own burdens. And he's drawing her back home to him. Can we thank God for that? Isn't that worthy of praise? That's awesome. There's another one that we got. Uh, there's a brother in our church uh, who had an accident through a sporting thing. Got some cuts and stuff, some pain. And thought everything was fine. But then had to get a CT scan after experiencing dizziness. Uh, wasn't doing well, but asked for prayer. Two people came and prayed over him, and then afterward, the next morning when he woke up, uh, he was doing really good and no dizziness, no pain. Can we thank God for that? Isn't that awesome? That's great to hear. Here's another one that someone sent in earlier. Um, there's a sister in our church, who, who, a different one, who said, God is bringing me back to faith and to make changes in her life to honor God. Don't we think it's great when people's hearts are moved and brought back to, to the Lord and him teaching them and encouraging them on the way to live? Let's thank God for what he's doing in the sister's life. That's really awesome. And then uh, there's another uh, praise report that we received earlier. There's a brother in our church. Son got baptized. And what's cool about that is the son took it seriously enough where he put the baptism picture next to his bed. I thought that was cool because for a teenager to take faith seriously, to make that something focal for his life is really cool. Let's thank God for those kind of things. It's really awesome. We could go on and on about what God is doing. Um, Oh, there's someone that celebrated finishing their third week of college. Let's praise God for that. Praise God for what God is doing in your life, sister. That's awesome. And then because I saw them walk in a little bit late but can't blame them, let's praise God for the new baby in the Wilhelm's life. Congrats, Leigh and Frank. We're really praising God for your baby. We love that. Long journey. We know. Friends, we want to celebrate what God is doing. I cannot emphasize this enough. Why? Because I want to hear what's happening in your life. So many times we get stories anecdotally. Pastor Frida will say, Pastor, you know what happened at prayer and healing? No, you don't because you wasn't there. I get all that kind of stuff, right? I get people in connect groups saying, oh, this happened in our connect group. And I'm like, that's awesome. Can we tell other people so our faith, like, it's not just mine, but all of our faith grows? We want to hear this from you. Does that make sense? Yeah? Sunday morning, adoration, restoration, celebration, a big way for us to be impacted by the Spirit of God. Okay, I'm really excited for this. I think it's going to be really fun to do this together. 
Online family, you can do this too. You can scan the QR code at home uh, on the website. Tell us what's going on with you because you're a part of this together. And also we want to acknowledge, we said this before, we had nine people get baptized at our last baptism and out of the nine, three of them were joining us online which means 33% of our baptizees were part of our online ohana. So there is ministry happening online. Thank you guys for being a part of that. We're excited for that. And let's praise God for that too. That's a good one. I know that those are not the only ones that we can celebrate what's got happening in lives. Tell us. Tell us about celebrating your 50th wedding anniversary. Tell us about grandkids being born. Tell us about prayer requests being fulfilled. Tell us about what God is doing. We want to celebrate these things with you. Because they're worthy to be celebrated. Because God is worthy to be praised. Amen? Okay, let's finish up on this idea. If we're going to do all these impactful services, as you can already see, it takes a lot of hands to make this happen. I want to introduce you to a few people that represent areas of our church that make Sunday mornings happen. The first area is creative Sunday uh, services. This is everything from what you see on the stage to how it's communicated online to what it sounds like, what it looks like, to the words over here. And the person representing that today is going to be the one and only Dawn. We welcome Dawn up to the stage as she shares about that. Come on up, Dawn. Uh, Dawn, tell everybody your name, please. My name is Dawn. Hi. Good job. Uh, Don, what, um, what do you serve here at Metro? What do you do? So up in that dark room right there to the left of the TV, that's where I am at today too. So myself and Kylie are doing the switcher and the pro presenter. What is switcher and pro? What is that? So basically we are in charge of putting the slides up on the screen. We are, uh, my job is to make sure the online service is going good. So I communicate with like Ryan in the back on the camera back there. We have a camera up on stage, and then we have a roving camera guy that you see during worship team. We, I communicate with them to, sh to tell them who's going to be online. That's pretty cool. So you do the camera stuff, which cameras go on, you put the lyrics up. So you're like for regular work, that's volunteer, for regular work, Monday through Friday, you're like a geek squad, like computer engineering, like that, that's your background, right? No. <laughs> I'm actually a third grade teacher at Kalihi. And also, Kylie also is a third grade teacher at Kalihi Elementary School. So because you work with kids from Camp 4 Housing, you're really good at technology and all this stuff, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, all we knew as coming in as teachers were how to do a lesson plan, how to make different work, fun worksheets, how to plan for being a teacher, not for media. So how did you learn how to do this stuff? So we had, a, when we first volunteered, we had a few people like Nate and a couple of our um, media team who actually poured in their time to help us learn the different things. Like when, I got, when we got up there, we were like, we can't do this. There's like buttons everywhere. What is this for? What do you do with that? Poor Nate had to deal with us how many times. There are a couple other people like Travis and whatever had to deal with our questions, but they were super patient with us and got us to understand how to work switcher and pro press also That's at awesome. the same time. So you were trained as a volunteer how to do this, yeah? And Kara told me anecdotally, yeah, Dawn said she didn't want to do switcher, but now she's doing it. So, oh, all right, Dawn, yeah! I didn't, and actually it's super fun. It seems like they're, it's overwhelming at first, but it's fun, and then also you can get harassed by Pastor Owen too sometimes. So oh, yeah. It's Ooh. even better. Everybody <laughs> loves being harassed by Pastor <laughs> Owen, oh boy. <laughs> We're trying to get people to serve, not Yes, not it's that. fun, though. Okay, 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 thank you, thank you. Um, Don, we love that you and Kylie, you're friends, you're coworkers, but you also serve together. You're such an important part of the ministry up there. Um, this isn't a, a easy thing. It's not anybody can do. You have to be willing to learn. Um, but do you think that it's too hard to learn, or is it pretty easy to learn? No. I, I would say in the beginning, it does get tough because you have to understand what the buttons are. But over time and pouring out, and the one reason you do it is for Jesus. So bottom line is if your heart is not there to learn for Jesus, then it's, it, it does make it hard. But when you're in there and you feel the love of God and the people that you just serve with up there, it's so much fun. And I encourage you to sign up, even if it's just to do cameras. Um, it's, it's just a fun place to be. Say thanks to Don. Let's do great. Creative Weekend Service is worship team. 
It's a sound team, lights, it's producing, it's our media up there. If you're someone who's willing to learn, we'd love to teach you. We need you. Can I be really honest with you? We need, we need more help because it's such an important part of you watching us online or if you're not online but you're in the house but you have to see the big giant screen where my shirt looks green, we need cameras. <laughs> Can I tell you how desperate we are for people on camera? We had Ed Kinney doing camera. We have Ryan Dung doing camera. Ryan is awesome. Ryan is a dentist by trade. And instead of pulling teeth, he has to keep up with me. We need help. To make, to make this happen, we, we could really use your help. And the cool thing is that people of all ages can do it and serve together. Now, that's one area where we could use help. Here's another one. Um, outside, you'll see a table that says Creative Weekend Services. And there's another one uh, that talks about a welcome team and operations. To share about that heart, let's welcome Moani up to the stage. Moani. <laughs> Moani, where's Guy? Ah, <laughs> uh, bok, 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 bok. Moani's husband, Guy, was at the 7 o'clock service, but he went to Popeye's, yeah, for more chicken? Yes, he did. Okay. Yes, he did. Moni, tell us um, about where you serve here in the church. I'm actually on the welcome team and loving every minute of it. So we get to see each and every one of you as you come in. We write out your name tags and we get to meet you in person, which we love very much. Um, as you come in, you'll see the group out there. You'll see their big smiles and I'm telling you, the smiles, they shine for Jesus. So we're doing this for him to meet all of you. Moni, is it easy to welcome people or is it tough sometimes? Because, you know, I mean, like, let's, just, let's just talk. Like, some, sometimes, some people walk in like this on Sunday, huh? Like, <laughs> you want a name tag? Okay. Like, what's, what's your name? <laughs> Pastor Mike Brock. Like, like that kind of, like, <laughs> like. <laughs> Actually, you know, some people, you can, I mean, they're, they're tired, they're coming into service, but once they hit us, most of them are smiling. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you yeah. tell them, hey, you better smile when I give you this name. Like, <laughs> because, Moni, you and your team have the opportunity to show the welcoming heart of the yes. Father to anyone that is willing to come to church. Yes, yeah, definitely. And you guys do so, so well. Yeah. Okay. Moni, what would you say to anybody who might be thinking about serving, whether it's in parking, yeah, because that's the first mm -hmm. welcome, to greeting, which is the next welcome, to even ushering, because our ushers are here to make sure that nobody acts the fool during service otherwise. Yeah, like, but still, welcome, welcome. Yeah? Yes. What do you say to anybody that is interested in serving in the welcome team? You know, if you even have just a little spark of thinking that you want to do, you want to serve, just do it. You know, you can try it out. Um, it's all um, something that you want to give back. So it, it's a lot of love. And I think you'll love either ushering, welcoming, you know, um, anything. Lights, cameras. Action. You'll love it all. <laughs> yeah. Hey, say thanks to Moni. Thank you, Moni. Everybody knows what it's like to come to somewhere that you're not familiar with and feel unwelcomed, yeah? Like overlooked and you just kind of walk in. And it's okay, sometimes you want to be anonymous, I get that. Sometimes you just want to walk in and just kind of check it out without anybody like bothering you, I totally get that. But other times, it's nice to walk into a place you don't know and feel welcomed, like you've been home. It's the, it's the, the show Cheers, it's that sometimes you want to go, everybody knows your name, that's kind of the idea, right? So I think we want to do that, that kind of welcoming feeling here and it starts with people like you who are willing to welcome people in Jesus' name. Um, that's the welcome team. Operations is uh, something that we're trying to do. We want to build a, a setup and cleanup team. If you're someone who's not afraid to get dirty, like you want to help, you're not afraid to help take out trash, you're not afraid to help set things back up when we're done. Uh, when the whole day is done, we got to clean stuff up. We need some good hands for that. Before the day begins, we need hands to help set it up. We used to have those teams before the pandemic and no more. So we want to rebuild those teams. If you're interested, see us outside in the foyer at the operations parking one. It's kind of cool. They have little cars like Hot Wheels. This is parking. And then the welcome team before the cafe. Come see us there. Okay, last but not least, uh, one big area of our Sunday is Next Gen. These are our kids and youth ministries. Uh, to share about this is the biggest kid I've ever met. Welcome up Alex L. Young to the stage. Alex, come on up. <laughs> 
Alex, I love your heart um, to want to serve God. Come over here to the middle. To want to serve God, because you know, Ryan, he kind of finds us sometimes. <laughs> so uh, I love the heart that you have to serve God. Um, you served in the Palama outreaches, serving the kids, but also on Sunday morning, you're serving at Metro Kids. Why do you serve there? You know, to be honest, I'd rather spend more time with kids than adults. I mean, again, they're just so open and so honest and mostly loving. And again, you know, I think back to my kind of spiritual walk, it's that foundation that yeah. I spent in the Sunday school teachers that spent with me yeah. when I was younger. That's really cool. Yeah. Tell us about what it's like to serve at Metro Kids on a Sunday. Yeah, Metro Kids is incredible. Gracie and, and, and Pastor Willie have done such a great job of putting together all the materials that you need to get in there and to basically spend time loving on the kids. And you know, what you're called to do is just kind of share God's love with them. And again, with all the materials that they put together for us, you know, it's kind of turnkey operation. You're just in there and you spend time with kids and love on them. That's really cool. Hey, Alex, we appreciate your heart. Now, not just to watch our kids, not child care. You're teaching them about Jesus, how important that is. Say thanks to Alex for his heart to serve our next gen. Thank you so Thank much, you. Alex. If you see anybody that has a green apron like Racy's, hi Racy, come back. Uh, that's a Metro Kids volunteer. We would love your help to help with our kids um, to grow in Christ. Great news, our two-year-old class is awesome. We have wonderful parents who look so comfortable and relaxed right now because their two-year-old is learning about Jesus and not at their feet right now in service. So we love that ministry. Hey, real talk. If, if you had a Sunday school teacher when you were a kid growing up that made a difference in your life and you still remember them, um, maybe this is God saying to pay it back. Maybe this is time for you to start serving because we would love for you to impact kids now in whatever stage of life God has you in. You can do it as a family, and I think it's a great way to do so. It's a wonderful way to make impactful services happen. Okay, last thing I want to tell you is great news. This is a new thing. First time we're announcing it today. Um, here's some things that we're excited to praise God for as for vision where we're going. Starting in October, the first Sunday in October, we are going to begin having our junior high and high school students meeting on Sunday morning instead of Friday night. That's right. A live youth ministry is going to be gathering on Sunday mornings again, and it's a great way to impact our kids because God knows the teenager next to you is pretty bored by now, and they'd have a lot more fun in our youth group on Sunday morning. Let's praise God for that. Isn't that wonderful news? I see you, Jaden. So, with all of this happening, we want you, and let me talk to parents if you have a teenager, bring them on Sunday mornings for Alive, our youth ministry. We need you to support this as our kids get to know Jesus. That means coming on Sunday so your kid can be a part of this because Willie and his team are going to be impacting kids on a Sunday instead of a Friday because Sunday's kids are here. Now, furthermore, that means if you have a heart for teenagers, we need you. Let me say that again. If you have a heart for teenagers to know Jesus, we need you. It's a very niche market. It's not for the thin-skinned. It's for people that are willing to put up with kids who are trying to be cool but are uber dorks, but you want to show them Jesus because we all know what that's like. Come and help us to build up our teenagers. Man, I would love to see our next gen from two years old up to 18, 19, 20 years old loving Jesus. And it doesn't happen by accident. It happens intentionally with impactful services on Sunday for all generations, not just us here in the house, but in our youth group, our kids' ministries. And we can do this. We need you. So I want you to consider what does it mean to be impacted by the Spirit of God on Sunday? Why do we do this? Because in the end of all things, Jesus is worthy of it all. Would you say amen? At the end of, of all things, at the end of the day, at the end of the age, Revelation 7 reminds us that every nation and tribe will bow before the throne of the Lamb and they will sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. Why do we do this? Because we already know who wins the game. So why not get on the winning side? Why not contribute to be a part of the team? Why not get behind what God is doing already? That's why Sundays matter. And that's why you matter, because you're a part of this. Would you bow your heads with me? Let's pray. As we pray, I'm going to ask you a few questions to reflect on what we've been talking about. Lord, I pray that you would impact our hearts, that Sunday mornings wouldn't be routine or rigmarole or worse yet, something that we just have to endure. I pray that Sunday mornings would be enlightening, enlivening. I pray that it would be a time 
when we grow deeper with you, when we're impacted by the Spirit of God, through your word, with your people, shoulder to shoulder, heart to heart. So in this moment of prayer, let me ask you a few questions of response. Are you being impacted by the Spirit of God through the Word of God, with the people of God? Or has this simply become routine or worse yet, boring church? What might be inhibiting you from being impacted by God's Spirit? What might be distracting you from allowing God to impact your heart, your life, your attitude, your mind, your thoughts, your desires? Then finally, how can you contribute to making services impactful? How can you be a part of what's going on than merely just a spectator? Father, I thank you that you desire to change our hearts so that we would be changed by Jesus. Help us, Lord, in moments of gathering, of worship, of digging into your word. Help us to receive your kindness that would lead us to repentance. Help us to hear what you have to say to us so our lives would change. And then lastly, help us to see how we're not people who just receive all of this, but we contribute to making it happen. We thank you for this, Lord. In Christ's name we pray, amen.